Are handmade gifts really worth it? This is the question that I find myself asking every year when it gets to a certain point, a little bit too close to the deadline, quite a lot past midnight when I've stitched my fingers together, spilt the glue bottle everywhere. I'm in a cold sweat and a panic wondering if I will ever make the deadline and why on earth I've decided to have this harebrained scheme to begin with. Um, <laughs> if you're anything like me, you will always start with the best of intentions of creating one wonderful handmade gifts for your friends and your family, your loved ones, and things might not always work out just as planned. So together, let's explore this topic. Are handmade gifts really worth it? Hello and welcome to The Crimson Stitchery, a video channel about making all things beautiful and useful. My name is Anushka, you can find me elsewhere online as a sour telling, that's my username on Instagram and over on Ravelry. Links for this video can be found in the show notes which are in the description bar down below here on YouTube. So this video mainly focuses on the crafts that I myself do, which are knitting and crochet, um, sewing and dressmaking, things like that. But these ideas can also be applied to a range of other crafts, whether that's like baking or, you know, making candles or I, I don't know what else you guys get up to, woodwork. Um, and it can also just be applied, you know, just some ideas to think about for gift giving in general. So I hope that you are comfy, grab something nice to drink. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Bird and Blend because I've been brewing a really delicious smelling mm, rooibos chai, um, gingerbread chai, which is rooibos tea with like cinnamon and cardamom and, and delicious spices that is currently wafting towards me in my lovely matching red teapot. So thank you very much um, to Bird and Blend for that gift. But yeah, grab yourself something nice to drink and let's get started. For anyone that hasn't met me before, I just want to start by explaining that when it comes to making handmade gifts, um, I have quite a lot of experience, but when it comes to making things in general, I have also a range of experience, both on a personal kind of domestic level, but also on a professional level. Um, because firstly, I've been knitting for, what is it, about 15 or 16 years now. Um, and I've been crocheting for eight years. I've been sewing for ages and I've made things for myself but I've also trained and worked professionally where I used to make things, I specialised in period tailoring and I used to be a professional costume maker for many years in my early 20s. Um, and also when it comes to yarn crafts, knitting and crochet, I've also you know, designed and written knitting patterns that I have had published in magazines and also self-published online. Um, there's details about my designs available again through the links below if you're interested. So I just wanted to say firstly, when it comes to making gifts, I am not an amateur. Um, but also, I am not a miser. In fact, for many years, you know, when I first started learning how to knit when I was in my teens, for years I actually didn't manage to retain any of the knitted items for myself because they were all given away to friends, to family members, with varying degrees of, um, let's say, success <laughs> and, you know, varying results overall. But for years I actually didn't have anything for myself at all because I just gave it all away. So now that I am older and hopefully wiser, I've learned quite a lot from all of those experiences. And as a result, I'm quite a lot pickier when it comes to handmade gifts. I'm very, very cheesy about who I make and give things to. Um, and I'm also extremely choosy about the types of projects that I go for, um, that I would, you know, create as something to give away that wasn't for myself, especially to give away under a deadline, whether that's Christmas, a birthday, an anniversary, or any kind of, you know, special occasion, um, a cheering up present, a get well present, whatever it is. So I thought that it being December now, this was a great opportunity to have a discussion with you guys about the nature and politics of handmade gifts. So this video just shares some of my thoughts that I have been amassing, especially over the last few weeks. And as always, for one of my videos on the Crimson Stitchery, I myself treat this as a conversation. So please do chip in down below in the comments if you've got something to share too. The first thing to consider with handmade gifts is that 
Handmade gifts are not necessarily cheaper than store-bought gifts. And I think that this is quite a really important misconception to go into, especially with people who are perhaps less experienced at making, but also with people that don't make anything at all. Because there is this very, very out of date notion that, you know, doing, making things yourself is thrifty, um, is amateur, is, I don't know, it's just cheaper and perhaps easier than going out and doing loads of shopping and buying stuff. But as anybody who's even just dabbled, dabbled in a craft, or maybe who has tried something out and actually wanted to improve and learn more, as anyone will let you know, that is just simply not true. And I'm not even talking about the kind of time as money metaphor, you know, the fact that making handmade gifts can take a very, very long time. Obviously it depends what exactly you are making. Um, and when it comes to handmade gifts, I tend not to try and, you know, time it and look at it in a sort of hourly basis because quite frankly, it would be, you know, it'd be quite horrifying. <laughs> um, um, especially if you want to, you know, try and pay yourself a decent wage or, you know, like a metaphorical wage, if you compare it to what factory workers earn um, in, you know, mass mass production um, settings in factory production um, in countries which have a less, you know, less economically developed countries which have a, a less prosperous economy, quite frankly. Um, so I'm not even talking about the time is money, you know, thing. It takes a really long time to learn a craft and execute it really well. Um, but just in general, like when you are buying the materials for something, it's not cheap. Anyone that knits and crochets will tell you it's not cheap. And I also think it depends on how you make that comparison. You know, if you bought, um, you know, four meters of fabric from a market that was five pound per meter and that got you 20 pounds and you wanted to sew a dress, but then you bought the pattern and then that was another 10 pounds and you bought the thread and stuff and that was another 10 pounds, maybe that takes you up to 40 pounds. And you might compare that to buying a dress from a, you know, a medium range high street store so I'm not talking about Primark where you can buy a dress for 20 quid but maybe even more like um I don't know Marks and Spencer's top shop let alone places like Coz or more expensive high street shops where you might buy a dress for 80 to 200 pounds so it can seem a little bit cheaper but also when you factor in additional things like um tools you know other kinds of materials that are un unexpected the electricity costs of running a sewing machine or just running the lights in your home if you're knitting and crocheting or doing things by hand there's just so much to consider and this is just kind of a, just general thoughts you know i'm not going into great depth about economies of scale and cost of materials and so on and so forth um but when it comes to the idea of handmade gifts being cheaper, sometimes I think it's a bit difficult to compare because it depends on your skill level. Um, and it also depends on like what brand and what shop you are actually comparing it to. And also when you compare things to you know, luxury, expensive items, you've also got to take into account um, the level of skill and ability of the people that have created those items and also like the quality of the materials that they have used. So are you like trying to recreate something luxury or you know, you're just sort of trying to compare something in general so <laughs> overall it's hard to make that comparison but I'm just throwing out you know a few examples sometimes also it can only really be cheaper if you buy materials in bulk but then again you have to factor in you know not just the cost per unit but also are you actually going to use everything up are you going to be able to store it? You know, at what at what point is it really going to be cheaper? Like, and I'm not talking about making 10 of something, I'm talking about maybe you have to go ahead and make like 100 or 200 of something to really make, you know, bring that idea of the cost per unit down. So it can seem cheaper, but when you do all of the maths, it's often not necessarily cheaper and also it depends on what you are actually making the comparison to. So I think if you want to do, if you want to make handmade gifts, um, you know, you obviously you have to consider money um, and, you know, talking about money is something that I've always been quite frank about on this channel and I think, you know, there's no need to be embarrassed our own individual personal financial situations are firstly you know what I just said they're personal um, and also just nothing to be ashamed at because you are 
you're just where you are at. But making a handmade gift is a big investment um, in terms of your time, your effort. And you know, it's a big emotional investment for you as a giver as well. So I'm gonna to touch upon this, um, I'm gonna to return to this theme a little bit later, but it's not a cheaper option. So you just need to make sure that the person that you are giving things to is gonna be really appreciative of that and not dismissive. On that note, ask yourself, will the recipient really appreciate handmade gifts? And in fact, will they appreciate it and engage with it in the manner that you hope them to? So over the last couple of months on my YouTube channel, on my more regular crafty vlog where I share what I've been making, viewers and I have been engaging in what I've referred to as the waistcoat saga, which is this situation where I had the best of intentions, created something for my grandfather and it just it just didn't, it just didn't go as I pleased and I just had to do my best not to feel hurt by the situation and in fact I wasn't because I was quite pragmatic in my attitude to it which is if you haven't been watching basically I made something for him you know I was very very considerate of the materials that I chose and you know the the, the laundering um aspects and you know details like pockets and the cut the fit uh and it was something that he needed in his wardrobe but basically he you know, seemed quite appreciative, but had no, actually in practice seemed to have no desire to wear it, um, which, yeah, some people could find hurtful, um, but I just chose not to see it in that way. So basically what that experience has reiterated to me is that you need to choose your recipients very wisely and make sure that they are just the people that are going to love it, to appreciate it, to be thankful to you for your effort. Um, and also I would say sometimes it's good to make things for other makers because then they, they'll they really know or you know people that have a, a parent or a relative or you know just a friend that is also a maker, people that really know what it what it takes. The sad fact of the matter is that some people just don't like things that are handmade or homemade at all. Um, <laughs> these people can be found everywhere quite frankly and it can can turn out to be a really nasty surprise actually. Um, so if you can kind of get an inkling of whether or not one of those types of people are in your life, then that would serve you very well. Because quite frankly, the moment where you are handing over something that you have poured your heart and soul into is just not the moment to engage someone in the debate about capitalism, overproduction, overconsumption <laughs> and all of the rest of it. It's just a discussion for another day and quite frankly I think you should try and save yourself the pain. When it comes to appreciation and use of handmade gifts it might not only be that they could be you know rejected but it might also be that um, you know they're a little bit in awe of the handmade gifts. So I've also given things to people where they were very appreciative and they were very thankful but they were basically very very nervous and worried when it came to the handmade gifts. That might be because I used a luxurious material because from my perspective I wanted to treat them by you know giving them something made in silk or whatever it was or it might be that it's just you know so special that they're afraid of ruining it so they don't want to wear it because they're afraid of losing it and that can actually be quite a stressful experience for um, recipients too and I think again it's about knowing you know knowing the habits of the person that you're giving things to. I once spent ages when I was a teenager knitting my mum a very complicated lace scarf that um, you know I, I chose very very carefully all of the materials but basically she was so scared that she was going to lose it that she only ever wore it around the house and at a certain point stopped even doing that and just sort of had it hanging on a hook to, to display um, and you know she said that to me I'm too scared of losing it I would feel really really bad and that's kind of tough and I think you don't it, it, it's you have to strike a right balance there um, but ultimately you know the next thing that I made for my mum wasn't made of like a silky lacy item but it was instead like a garter stitch cotton velour scarf that was much more you know rough and ready um, much more practical
practical, it could be machine washed, it could be flung about, you know, much more hardy item. And then she did wear that and she was really happy with that. So make sure that you listen to your recipients, really listen to them and also just try and observe them if you have the opportunity to do so and figure out what is and isn't going to work um, for their lifestyles so that you can avoid any, you know, regret or, um, you know, sadness or disappointment on both of your ends. Um, which are obviously not feelings that you want to have associated with a handmade gift that you yourself have put loads of effort into planning and executing and giving. Another anecdote that I want to share with you is again related to um, knitwear and, and wool in particular. So for years my best friend had been begging me to make her hand knitted socks. She'd been absolutely begging me and she tried to bribe me with all sorts of things. She offered to pay me a real hourly wage. I was like, no, you can't afford that. <laughs> Um, she begged me for years and for years I refused and the reason for that was because I had witnessed her firsthand put a cashmere jumper and a silk dress in a hot wash in the washing machine together with a pair of jeans. <laughs> And after I saw her do that, I said, absolutely no way am I ever knitting anything for you. You're going to ruin it. And so this went on for years, this back and forth banter. And eventually I did give her a pair of handmade socks and she absolutely loved them. She treasures them and she even hand washes them. So, <laughs> you know, I sort of made that very, very clear to her, which seemed a bit, you know, tough love at the time. But in the end, it meant that she got what she wanted. And actually, she was able, you know, to change her laundry practices, because quite frankly, she would have been really upset if she had shrunk one of the socks in the wash or damaged them or whatever. It's taking a breath and a sip of tea. Um, the next thing that you need to think about when it comes to making handmade gifts is the sensory aspects of those gifts, um, of the materials that they're made from and their style and their fit on the body and how that gels with the recipient. So an obvious um, aspect of this is allergies. You know, if someone has an allergy to, you know, a, a certain fibre, a wool allergy, you know, is generally quite common. Um, or if they've got a strong aversion to certain scents, for example, like I myself am very sensitive about scents. Um, or it might not be an allergy, but it might just be a personal preference when it comes to materials. So I myself am pretty fussy about um, the fact that I just love natural materials. I love cotton, silk, wool, linen, uh, bamboo's okay too, and all of the rest of it. And when it comes to synthetics, I am like hideously choosy. Uh, don't ever buy me clothing. <laughs> hideously choosy. And you know, if someone gave me something that they'd made and it was all made out of, you know, polyester or acrylics, you know, I'd appreciate the sentiment, but I probably myself wouldn't get much use out of it because it's not it's just not my jam. Um, and there are different reasons for which people might prefer different types of fibres, um, whether that's in cloth or yarn. So again, this is quite related to, you know, um, textile crafts, but I think this can be very well applied actually um, in general because um, it's, it's so deeply personal. So there might be, you know, other other considerations might just be like to do with textures and, and touch um, or it might be sustainability environmental reasons as it is largely for me um, or you know what whatever it is good memories bad memories <laughs> so think about fibers textures smells but also think if it is clothing that you're making think about fit on the body um, which can be very very tricky and it can again be very sensitive if things um, are uncomfortable, if they're the wrong size, if they're too small or too large, depending on the person, you know, and depending on how it's handled with the gift giving, that can be quite upsetting for some people. Um, also, think of the practical elements, again, of its garments about fastenings, which is a lot of the time it's quite related to people's like um, physical abilities or disabilities. So you might be aware about um, buttons and fastenings and zips, you know, things like that pockets and the size of pockets. You might think about neck holes and, you know, armholes, things not being too tight or restrictive so that they can go on and off the body quite easily. All of this is just something to consider when you're selecting and planning out your projects, just so that you can have, you know, ideally the most success, um, as, as much success as possible when it comes to creating and giving something away. 
The next thing I want to talk about is time, planning, stress, mental health, and also physical health. So this is a really massive factor when it comes to handmade gifts. You know, I, I said at the top that they often just work out to be much more expensive than anticipated originally, but also it takes a long time to make things and it takes a long time to make things well. Um, and how are you with deadlines? You know, ask yourself that question and answer it as honestly as you can. Are you successful with deadlines or are you not? Are you good at planning time, you know, timings out and sticking to a schedule? Or are you, are you not? Is that unrealistic for you? And adjust your expectations of what you can achieve accordingly. If you don't handle stress well, or you've just got lots of other things going on in your life, potentially lots of other demanding and stressful things, this might not be the best thing to do if it's just gonna add another item to your list, you know, add more weight to the load that you have to carry, metaphorically speaking. Um, just be realistic and set yourself up for success rather than failure with smaller and achievable goals at this stage. When it comes to physical health, I want to say that you need to be very careful because um, pressure filled, last minute deadline knitting and sewing has even in me and I'm in my late 20s has triggered painful flare ups. In the past I've suffered from repetitive strain injuries and tendonitis and I've had quite significant um, muscular as well as nerve pain in my hands. Don't worry, I've, I've been to a doctor, um, it's all cool. But what I mean to say is, you know, know your health, but just be aware that sometimes when you take too much on, especially too much making, when there's the pressure, when there's a deadline, when you get really, really into it, when you just wanna stay up another half an hour just so that you can get the thing done, it can trigger quite significant flare ups that could have, you know, very long lasting side effects. I, I often talk about this on my video channel because I think it's a really, really important thing to factor in when you're making, that you it's using your body, you're using your body Body to create something else so you need to take care of your body because you are the tool first and foremost right it's your hands making things so you really really need to bear that in mind whether you yourself do have a diagnosed medical condition or whether you don't have a long-term condition like me but you know you you have flare-ups or you know even if you are actually in really good health you just never know so um, especially when you're yeah, just doing loads and loads and loads of crafting, suddenly just crammed into a short time frame. So make sure that you take breaks, make sure that you, you take stretches. And also if you have any little twinges or little, you know, if you feel like a muscle in your eye vibrating, if you feel um, any cramps in your hands or in your legs or in your back or your shoulders or your whole body, <laughs> Take care of that as soon as you can, because honestly, you don't want to ruin the happy occasion by being debilitated. It's not fun. And actually I have been there. I've been, you know, I've had moments where my tendonitis, especially when I was a teenager, was so bad that I actually couldn't pick up a cup of coffee and I couldn't turn a doorknob to open a door. It's absolutely horrendous um, and you just don't want to get in that situation. So any little little wobbles or niggles that you feel in your body, notice them. I think when it comes to gifts in general, but when it comes to handmade gifts, it's about relationships. It's about communication, discussion, um, negotiation at times. And it's important to do that, I think, because gifts are deeply symbolic items, um, you know, in all cultures around the world that have so many more meanings beyond only what they are in their sort of material qualities. Um, but they, they are significant in so many other ways. And they may also stand in at times as a proxy for the relationships that you have with peoples, as well as with materials in general you know, in the world. So just make sure that you keep doing your research when it comes to the recipient and making the right choices because it's got to be about the recipient. It can't only be about you, the maker. But on that note, I think it's really important to own your reasons for making a handmade gift. And alongside that, accept that once you've given it away, you've let go of that agency. You know, it's out of your hands quite literally. It's no point trying to, you know, 
control things. Um, you Because you don't have any control over how it's received and how it's used and how it's worn. Um, obviously, you know, you can ask like innocuous questions, like I'll ask my teenage brother, hey, do you ever wear that hat I knitted you three years ago? And every now and then he'll, he'll pull it out and be wearing it. But I don't, you know, ask him that and demand that he wears it every single time that I see him during the winter. It just wouldn't be appropriate. You know, I just have to accept that you know, at a certain point, he might not even want to wear the hat. He might outgrow it. It might he might outgrow it stylistically and just don't, you know, no longer want anything to do with it. And that's just how it is. You know, I think because gifts are so symbolic, because they can, you know, f seem very bound up in our identities as the giver, um, it can be very difficult to let go of things. But ultimately we have to because that gift has sort of passed across that threshold and gone into someone else's home and someone else's life and I think it's important to respect and understand that. So on that last note my final tip is to pick projects carefully, do your research and choose projects that you can achieve in a realistic time frame on a realistic budget whether that's with materials that you already have or things that are easily available to you you know don't set your hopes on you know making something with really elaborate materials that have to be ordered in that you know have a long lead time that reduce your deadline and, and so on and so forth just be realistic so that you can have a fun positive experience making and a fabulous successful and loving experience in the giving as well on that note i do have a couple of videos on this channel that i'd love to recommend you which is how to knit faster um, and these tips are applicable for crochet as well um, so as I always say I've been knitting much longer than I've been crocheting but I've got nothing against crochet I like it my mum was a crocheter I've done crochet <laughs> I just don't do it as often as knitting it's just how it is um, <laughs> so how to knit faster and also when it comes to sewing and dressmaking I have a video about how to sew quickly and efficiently um, which I created earlier this year, so do check those out. Um, finally, just a tiny little shout out for myself, which was that the images that I featured in the video introduction at the top were actually of two patterns that I've been designing this winter that I am releasing very soon. By the time you watch this video, it might have already been released, so check it out in the down bar here on YouTube. And it's a hat and fingerless mitts pattern that I'm really excited to be sharing with you. And the hat in particular is a pretty speedy knit because it's um, done in worsted weight yarn and it's really fun. So it could be a fun present, um, a little bit of last minute gift knitting if that suits you um, from me to you or maybe just a Christmas cast on for yourself. Who knows? Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Do leave me a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please do chip in in the comments down below and let me know your thoughts on making gifts. Making handmade gifts, gift knitting, gift sewing, gift crochet, gift candle making, gift gardening, <laughs> whatever it is. Let me know if you've had any really successful occasions and maybe why that might have been and how that might have come about and feel free to share in and commiserate about any less successful occasions too. Um, I'm sure it would all be very collegial down there in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you again on the Crimson Stitchery for another video soon. Take care. Bye bye.